This video will explain how thermal stratification can affect detection range in an acoustic telemetry system. Shown here are a number of factors that can affect the acoustic detection range. Many of these factors vary significantly by location and over time. It is important to be aware of these and other environmental impacts on detection range when conducting an acoustic telemetry study in order to correctly interpret animal behavior and the varying environmental conditions. An important seasonal variable impacting acoustic detection performance, in particular in lakes, is thermal stratification. In this video, we will discuss the impact of thermal stratification on detection performance in acoustic telemetry studies, and provide some recommendations on best practices for working in thermally stratified systems. It is well known that many lakes have seasonal thermal stratification with warm surface waters and cooler waters at depths. These temperature gradients have implications for the detection range of acoustic telemetry systems because sound waves refract and bend as they move from the epilimium to the hypolimium. Depending on how pronounced the thermal gradient is and on the relative locations of tagged fish and receivers, detection range may be significantly impacted in thermally stratified systems. There are two key questions to address when conducting an acoustic telemetry study in a thermally stratified system. First, how is detection range affected by a given temperature gradient? Second, how can I design my telemetry study to minimize the effects of seasonal stratification on my detection data? All lakes will experience some seasonal stratification, especially mid-latitude lakes, where summers are hot and winters are very cold. These lakes normally have two periods of mixing in spring and fall, and two stratified periods in summer and winter, referred to as a dimectic lake. Here is a typical thermal stratification pattern from Eastern Lake Ontario in 2015. The data show strong thermal stratification during summer to fall, and isothermal conditions during the remainder of the year. During summer, there are differences in temperature of as much as 15 degrees Celsius between top and bottom of the water column. Note that significant downwelling events that occur in early September and the upwelling events that occur in mid-September and early October. Now, let's go into details. In spring, the lake has uniform and cold water temperatures close to 4 degrees Celsius as there is no thermal stratification. Water is well mixed within the whole lake. As the lake moves into summer, a surface layer of 10 to 20 meters can warm up to 20 to 25 degrees Celsius, while the deeper water remains cold. A region of sharp thermal gradient known as the thermal cline develops and separates the surface and deeper layers. It is important to understand that the depth of thermal thermal cline is not static. Rather, it can change by as much as 10 to 20 meters on a daily basis due to the wind. When wind blows across the surface, warm water in the surface layer is pushed away to the far end and downwelling occurs. When wind blows from the opposite direction, upwelling of cold bottom waters will occur at the same side of the lake. When the wind stops, several cycles of internal movements can occur over periods of days. As a result, the depth of the thermal climb in most large lakes is constantly changing by many meters. During fall, the surface water cools, the lake begins to mix, and thermal stratification disappears. Once the water cools below 4 degrees Celsius at the start of winter, an inverse thermal stratification forms with water close to 4 degrees Celsius at the bottom and near freezing at the surface. This seasonal cycle is so important for fish telemetry because tagged fish typically have specific thermal preferences and may use different parts of the lake during different seasons. For example, the bottom of many lakes lacks oxygen during the summer months, resulting in fish actively avoiding the deep waters. With the presence of a thermal climb, this behavior has implications for the interpretation of acoustic telemetry data because detection performance can vary depending on the depth of acoustic receivers relative to the thermal layer that tagged fish chooses to occupy. Since we know that there can be strong temperature gradients in lakes during the summer, what impact can we expect on detection performance? 
We can start with some basic acoustic theories to develop an understanding of the main physical factors affecting the strength of an acoustic signal arriving at a receiver, contributing to the receiver's ability to detect attack. In the equation shown here, received signal strength represents the proportion of a transmitted signal that arrives at a receiver. The source signal strength represents the power level of the tag used, and the transmission loss represents losses in the strength of the signal as it travels through the water. The main source of the transmission loss in acoustic telemetry systems is three-dimensional spreading of the signal. The further the signal travels, the weaker it gets. An example signal strength received at an acoustic receiver. In order for the received signal to result in a detection, it must be strong enough to overcome any ambient noise that the receiver is also hearing. The difference between the received signal strength and the ambient noise level is called the signal-to-noise ratio, or SRN. When SRN is adequate, the acoustic transmission is detected. We can use these basic acoustic principles to understand the influence of thermal clients on acoustic signal propagation. Under ideal isothermal conditions, Water temperature is uniform throughout the whole lake. With sound emitted from a fish tank, the main loss of acoustic power is through three-dimensional spreading along the path between the transmitter and the receiver. When thermal clients are present, a speed of sound gradient proportional to the change in water temperature also develops. This occurs because the speed of sound in water changes with temperature. For typical acoustic frequencies, Sound speed ranges between 1400 and 1500 meters per second and will increase 8.6% from 0 to 35 degrees Celsius. A sound speed gradient will in turn result in refraction of acoustic signals as they pass across temperature layers. As the signal moves from warmer surface waters to colder, deeper waters, the signal slows down. According to Snell's law, sound speed is proportional to the direction of travel of the acoustic wave. This causes refraction as the sound wave slows down upon entering the colder water layer. During the thermally stratified period, instead of a ray moving as a straight line, sound signals will be refracted as they travel through regions of strong temperature gradient, such as the thermal climb. Here, the detection range of receivers will be further reduced because the acoustic refraction increases the impact of three-dimensional spreading. In effect, Refraction defocuses the sound, spreading out the sound waves even more, and thus dimming the sound volume arriving at the receiver. The impact of refraction due to the presence of a thermal climb and resulting sound speed gradient can be realized in some details by modeling acoustic rate propagation for both the isothermal and the stratified condition in a dimectic lake. In the following example, we will estimate how the sound signals would travel under different thermal conditions by using an open access modeling tool called Bellhop. Bellhop calculates the predicted path of sound wave and generates a visualization of acoustic power losses as the signal spreads away from the source. In isothermal conditions, sound signals travel as a straight line without any refraction due to the absence of sound speed gradient and can reflect off upper and lower boundaries. Eventually, the sound signal will be absorbed by obstacles and power loss will occur through spreading with distance. This color map shows the estimated power loss of an acoustic transmission along its path to the receiver in the absence of refraction. In this scenario, we see an average transmission loss of 70 dB by the time the signal reaches 600 meters from the source. The second figure is a plot of a sound signal's travel path in a stratified condition with a thermal climb located between 7 to 10 meters. Here, instead of traveling in a straight line, the acoustic rays bend downwards as they cross the thermal climb. The color map shows the effect of this bending on the pattern of power loss as the acoustic signal moves away from the transmission source. In this thermally stratified scenario, we see an average transmission loss of 70 dB by the time the signal reaches approximately 300 meters from the source, about half of the distance of isothermal case. Based on the idealized Bellhop model, our hypothesis is the summer stratification can significantly affect the detection range due to transmission loss caused by refraction. 
to test the hypothesis that the presence of a thermal climb may impact the acoustic detection range. We used the data from a field study in the strongly stratified waters of the St. Lawrence Channel at Eastern Lake Ontario. At this study site, we deployed acoustic receivers, reference fish tags at fixed locations, and temperature loggers to test the effect of the temperature gradient on detection performance. Four receivers were deployed at 50 meters, which is below the thermal climb. The receivers were placed 150 meters, 350 meters, 450 meters, and 650 meters away from the reference fish tags, which are located at station M5 in the diagram. At station M5, reference fish tags were deployed at 11 meters and 50 meters. At each depth, two different power levels of acoustic transmitter were used. The lower power tag was a V9 transmitter, and the higher power tag was a V16 transmitter. The tags were programmed to transmit on average every 30 minutes. At the same location, temperature loggers were deployed every 5 meters at depths from 10 to 50 meters. The temperature loggers were configured to transmit the temperature data hourly. In this study, we used data collected between early September and late October in 2015 to compare acoustic telemetry detection performance during thermally stratified conditions and isothermal conditions. The key variable to understand when considering the impact of thermal climbs on detection performance of acoustic telemetry systems is the sound speed difference. Sound speed difference is the difference in the speed of sound between the top and bottom of the lake. The larger the sound speed difference, the more pronounced the sound speed gradient in the system and the more pronounced the effects of sound signal refraction. Calculating the sound speed difference over the duration of our study in Eastern Lake Ontario, we see that the sound speed gradient is most pronounced in September when thermal stratification is present. Under isothermal conditions toward the end of October, the sound speed gradient no longer exists. Using the detection data from our reference fish tags deployed as previously described in Lake Ontario, we can examine the effect of a sound speed gradient on acoustic detection performance by plotting detection efficiency versus sound speed difference. Detection efficiency is calculated at the number of reference fish tag detections on a given receiver divided by the number of expected transmissions of the tag during a particular time period. We can generate this detection efficiency versus sound speed difference relationship for each transmitter to receiver distance in our study. Two example relationships are shown in this plot. We will see over the next few slides how sound speed difference due to a thermal climb can help to explain some of the long-term variability in detection range in acoustic telemetry studies. Shown here is the typical setup for a long-term range test often used to quantify detection range over time in a study area. The relationship between detection efficiency and the transmitter to receiver distance is described by a curved shape like this. The further the distance between the tag and the receiver, the fewer of the tag's transmissions are detected. What is important here is the change in variability of detection efficiency with distance. Not only we do typically see reduced detection efficiency with distance, we also see more variability in detection efficiency at larger distances, related to changes in environmental conditions at this study site over time. Next, let's look at the results of our study in Eastern Lake Ontario to see how seasonal changes in thermal stratification contribute to variability in detection performance over time. First, let's look at the relationship between sound speed difference and detection efficiency for our V9 reference fish tag located at 11 meter depth. This V9 tag has a power output of 145 decibels. Recall that during the thermally stratified season, this tag is located above the thermal climb and the receivers are below the thermal climb. At a transmitter to receiver distance of 150 meters, we see that changes in sound speed difference have little impact on the detection rate of the reference fish tag. As the distance between the V9 transmitter and the receivers increases, detection efficiency begins to drop as the sound speed gradient gets larger. At the largest transmitter to receiver separation tested, which is 650 meters, the effect of the thermal climb on detection efficiency is very pronounced. Looking next at the detection data from the higher power V16 transmitter, also located at 11 meter depths, we see a similar pattern. Again, 
at a transmitter to receiver distance of 150 meters. Changes in sound speed difference have little impact on the detection rate of the reference fish tag. As the distance between the V16 transmitter and the receiver increases, while we do see a drop in detection efficiency with increasing sound speed gradient. Detection efficiency remains higher in the presence of a thermal client at all distances than was the case for the V9 transmitter. The relationship between detection efficiency and sound speed difference for both the V9 and the V16 transmitters suggests that the impact of sound speed difference on detection efficiency becomes observable at a certain distance. In the next slide, we will use the Billhart modeling, this time on the Eastern Lake Ontario field data, to estimate this distance. To estimate the transmitter to receiver distance at which the effect of a thermal climb on detection efficiency becomes apparent in our field data, we used the Billhart modeling program to predict sound signal travel and transmission loss in our observed isothermal and stratified conditions. Field data from October 27th were used as a sample of isothermal condition, and data from September 7th were used as a sample of thermally stratified condition. The results show that during typical isothermal conditions without refraction, transmission loss increases uniformly with distance from the source in both the horizontal and the vertical directions. Under thermally stratified conditions, similar to the idealized model present earlier, some signals are refracted near the thermal climb and the transmission loss above and below the thermal climb is not uniform. In this scenario, Transmission loss below the thermal climb occurs more quickly than above the thermal climb. This difference in transmission loss is not observable, however, until the signal has reached approximately 200 meters from the source. To better understand the impact of both minimum sound speed difference and high sound speed difference sound detection efficiency, we split the range of sound speed difference into two categories, 0 to 15 meters per second and above 60 meters per second. For both the V9 and V16 transmitter, we then compare the detection efficiency to transmitter to receiver distance for both categories of sound speed difference to estimate the impact of these factors on detection range. For the V9 transmitter, when the thermal climb is either weak or not present, we see minimal reduction in detection efficiency within distance between transmitter and receiver. With strong thermal stratification, however, detection efficiency is significantly reduced with distance between the transmitter and the receiver. For the V16 transmitter, the pattern is similar, but the loss in detection efficiency is not as pronounced. Whereas, the V16 transmitter shows a detection efficiency of approximately 75% at 450 meters when a thermal client is present. The detection efficiency of the V9 transmitter is reduced to approximately 40% at the same distance, indicating that transmitter power output is also a determinant of detection probability. From our study, we can summarize a few important points. A high sound speed gradient resulted in a detection range reduction from more than 700 meters to 350 meters for the V9 transmitter, and 550 meters for the V16 transmitter. A weak sound speed gradient had little influence on detection efficiency of both the V9 and the V16 transmitter, or to a distance of at least 650 meters. In the presence of a thermal climb, signal transmission losses are comparable to transmission losses in isothermal conditions within a certain distance from the source. Detection efficiency is not affected by thermal stratification within this distance. In addition to thermal stratification, Transmitter power output is also a significant factor determining detection probability. In large lakes, thermal clan depth is dynamic and may impact the detection performance on a time scale of days. At the end, we would like to give some recommendations for field application. First, measure temperature profiles in your study area to be aware of possible thermal clan influences. Second, use Sentinel tags to measure detection range throughout your study period to be aware of changes in range due to thermal clients or environmental variables. Where possible, use higher power fish tags to mitigate the impact of thermal clients on detection probability. As well, deploy receivers on both sides of the thermal client to compare their detection performances. Otherwise, deploy receivers in the same thermal layer as your study animals to minimize thermal client influences. Finally, Deploy receivers in locations with relatively low ambient noise to maximize receiver signal-to-noise ratio in thermally stratified conditions. 
Thanks for watching.